Hi everyone, it's Dr. Bush at the Hypospadia Specialty Center, and today I have a special guest for us. So um, there's a lot of that is involved when it comes to the stress of having your baby or your young child or even your teenager who needs surgery. And I thought that this would be a really good time to talk about how we cope and best use that stress to um, make life a little bit easier for everyone that's involved in it. I'm not the expert at that by any means, so I've invited a special guest, um, Michael Laporte, who's gonna help chat with us today. So Michael is an emotional wellness coach, and he's a big reason why we have the practice that we do today. So I thought I'd introduce him to you guys and then let him chat a little bit about um, what it is that you can do to help um, with all of the anxiety and all of the emotion that goes into um, having a child with a birth defect and needing surgery for that. So, Michael, say hello. Dr. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it has been a while, and I'm so glad you could join us. So, exciting topic. Michael and I met, um, gosh, seven, eight years ago now, back when I was at the university. And part of the reason why we met is because I was in this leadership program where he was a, an assigned coach to me. And this was right at the time that um, I was conceptualizing having the Hypospadia Specialty Center and, and chatting with Dr. Snodgrass about the possibility of creating a center in the United States where families could come when they had difficult hypospadia problems. So nothing like this had ever existed in the United States, and even Dr. Snodgrass didn't really think that it could happen, but I had this strong belief in it. What it meant to do, though, was leaving a comfortable job um, at the university where I had a known salary, I had young children at the time, and it was a very stressful decision to say, do I leave all of this known behind and start an unknown that I believe in strongly, or do I stay put where at least I'm comfortable and I know that it works. And so for me, I had a lot of anxiety related to that decision. And it just so happened that Michael had been assigned to me. And, and so I sat down and chatted with him. I said, is this confidential? He said, absolutely. No one knows anything about what we chat about in these coaching sessions. And so we hashed it all out and he really, really helped me see what are the pros, what are the cons, what am I most anxious about um, when it comes to this decision and helped me reframe things so that I felt fully comfortable um, going into the next step, knowing that it may not work out as planned, that can certainly happen, but at least I felt like I had understood I guess I felt that I understood a little bit more about the pros and cons and, and what I was most anxious about when it came to making this huge decision in my life. So I thought that he would be the perfect person to have you guys chat with when it comes to a big decision in your life in terms of the impact that it's going to have on your little guy or your big guy or whatever the case may be. So Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Well, thank you again so much for having me. And, you know, I just want to comment on what, um, what an honor it was to walk with you on your journey, you know, to um, walk through your own stress and your own anxiety and to recognize, you know, maybe how stress was getting in your way or how you could use that stress to propel you to what you wanted in the future um, and really get you to, uh, you know, you got yourself through our, our conversations to a place where you were confident in making a decision that, Yes, risky, uh, you know, as any major life decision that we make comes with some, you know, some form of risk, right? Um, but you were able to get to a place where you were confident enough in yourself and in um, Dr. Snodgrass and in the decision to move forward that you were able to make the leap. And so um, it really was a privilege to, to walk with you on that journey. And so thanks again for, for having me today. We're so thrilled to have you, and I know that you can take some of that same confidence that you helped me find in myself and, and help our families with that, and I think it's something that 
we as surgeons don't think enough about when it comes to all of the stressors involved for for something major for a, you know a young child um, and and what that means for the whole family that's involved and so I thought this is a perfect opportunity for us to recognize that it is a stressful circumstance um, but also to to know that there are good ways of dealing with that stress and not so good ways of dealing with that stress and and you know some folks are going to need some of that extra coaching and you know, help getting through it. And I wanted to let them know that you're here and available for that. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, um, it, you know, kind of to your point, it's always when you're on the outside looking in that the stress doesn't seem as big, right? You know, so it's easy to forget that when people are making these life altering decisions that, that it can be um, a scary time. So let's talk a little bit, just, I do want to just share with people, you know, um, what is stress? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and put this on full view. Take just a minute, everyone, I apologize. And are you seeing the, the screen? I see your screen. It's not quite yet on um, the slideshow view. Okay. There's a bit of a delay. Sure. I'm going to try to swap displays. Apologize. You have a fancier setup than I do. <laughs> well, this worked so this worked so well a minute ago, right? So let's. That's right. How about now? What are you seeing? Still the same. Where I see the the slides on the side and the main slide. All right, well, let me see if I can. I apologize, everyone. Well, that's okay. These are Zoom videos for us and this is actually our first zoom webinar that we're doing for our hypespace specialty center families so all right how about now? Zoom webinars that? not yet it's still showing the whole thing all right okay under view options no it's i think it's my computer it's giving you trouble it is. So I do apologize, everyone. You know, it is new times we're in, right? So we are learning this technology sometimes as we go. But I think it's great because it really, uh, we, Dr. Schneidergast and I participated in a few uh, Zoom webinars to folks around the world with hypospadia stuff. And it gave me the idea that this would be a great way to introduce you guys to others. Now it looks like it's working, so we're good. All right, great. So again, apologies, thanks for your patience. Um, and uh, you know, I think this is like exactly what you said. It's just such a great way to be able to introduce the topic of coaching um, and to specifically talk about this topic of stress because you know, it can be um, embarrassing, it can be anxiety producing, it can be scary to talk about the stressors that we have in our lives with those that are around us because we have to be willing to be vulnerable, right? And sometimes being vulnerable with um, a person that doesn't know you as well or you know working with a coach can can help you sometimes walk through that even a little bit easier than than the people that are in your life every day so thanks for the opportunity to just come and talk about this um, so I want to first talk about just what is stress right so um, the typical way that we think about stress is really what we call distress right and so it's that negative stress so it's that situation where it feels overwhelming um, Oftentimes, we think that the situation is unlikely to produce any satisfactory outcomes. Um, our, you know, our health starts to deteriorate, we, and we begin to have negative thoughts about life, um, about ourselves, about the choices that we make. Right, and so this is this is sort of how we understand stress, um, sort of in in the everyday world. Right. Um, the interesting thing about this is that. Um, you know, it has long lasting effects often, right? Distress 
it isn't just um, short lived, right? Distress is often long lived, and even maybe after we're past the stressful situation, distress can last. And um, you know, I'm wondering if you've seen effects of stress, you know, on the patients that you work with. Have you how have you seen that play out? Well, certainly we see it in our um, teens and adults to the extent that we really, really recommend that they chat with either a coach or a licensed therapist because it's so apparent for the older patients who are undergoing surgery. But we also do see a version of it, I think, um, you can maybe explain in more detail that I think even the little babies and the toddlers can kind of pick up on um, when they have a family member that's really, really anxious and it, and it seems like maybe they get more anxious. Is that something that's possible? You know, it absolutely is. And that's, you know, that's kind of this next point. <laughs> Often anxiety is triggered, right? So as we're trying to make a decision and we're distressed about that decision, um, you know, we start to exhibit the signs of anxiety. And, you know, toddlers, um, infants, uh, you know, even really up to about the age of five, kids kids aren't necessarily able to completely articulate emotion, right? Um, and so they don't understand um, what anxiety really is. They just see the behaviors associated with anxiety being acted out in the people around them. And so they mimic that, right? Because that's really, you know, those, those are our formative years. That's where we're learning how to behave. And so we, we mimic the behaviors that we see other people and talk about long lasting um, that lasts into truly adulthood, right? Like the coping skills that we learn as children by watching the people around us cope are the, the skills that we take with us into adulthood. I um, hadn't really thought about that, how important it is for the families to really be comfortable and try to minimize that stress and anxiety they're feeling just as a model for helping their children to cope with difficult situations that they're certainly going to have as they grow. Sure. Well, and, you know, there's a, a biological effect as well, right? I mean, even on healing, because um, when we mimic stress behavior, right, um, the, the effect it has on our body is it produces those stress hormones. True. Um, and the stress hormones do impact how we heal, right? I mean, there's been research around um, how, how they can actually Im impair healing and delay, you know, delay healing times. That makes it even more crucial then that we're doing a good job of taking care of our emotional well-being um, around surgery, something that I think a lot of us have never thought of. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we think we're going to go in, we're going to have the surgery. Yes, it's going to be stressful. We'll get over it. But, but there are some lasting effects. Um, you know, with that, we've already talked a little bit too about just in distress, we have those unpleasant feelings. So, you know, that's thing that those are things that others around us pick up on as well. So, you know, uh, I'm stressed, I'm not in a great place emotionally. So it impacts every other decision that I make or it impacts my mood. So something I normally deal with pretty easily, feels like it's even much more difficult to deal with than normal, right? Um, and so it just, gosh, it's just, it pounds, right? I mean, it just, it just expands all of the time. Well, I think um, it's a good time to mention that from our standpoint as surgeons and, and when it comes to your baby or your child, we work very hard to make this whole circumstance for them not painful and not scary. That's why we give them for the older children a pre-medication so they don't have anxiety being separated from their parents. It's why in every single patient, we're huge believers in numbing blocks so that none of those pain receptors get upregulated and all of that that happens while they're asleep so that they don't think about a shot or getting an IV because that's painful to them and we don't want them to think about that and when it works well they wake up and they're comfortable and they haven't had this stress response unless they see it in their parents and then mimic it that way that's different than when we've traveled sometimes to other countries for instance where they don't do pre-medication they take a child ripping you know ripping them from their parents and they're screaming bloody murder and they're terrified. And that is something that of course is going to have long lasting um, impact. I mean, we see it in these kids and it's 
horrible. So we do everything we can on the medical side to minimize any of that for, for your, you know, your child at all different ages. We have to treat it a little bit differently, but it's there. But this is something that, that now for everybody who's supporting that little guy, you know, is an important issue. Absolutely. Well, we want to take the patient's distress and turn it into trauma, right? So, yes. um, very important. Uh, you know, and then, um, so we talked already about a little bit about focus can decrease. So it's, it, you know, this is where when you're making a big decision. So for example, should my child have the surgery or not? You know, there's already all of these emotions that parents often experience because their child has um, this issue to begin with, right? So there's guilt and, you know, all the things we know come up. And so um, that just adds to our level of distress, which then makes it hard to focus, makes it hard to make a decision that we feel comfortable with because we're just so confused, right? And, and so, um, you know, distress certainly can play a role in our lives, right? Um, it can often lead to a type of positive stress, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but it, it, um, it can also really sort of um, lock us in place, right? Uh, and make us afraid to make a decision. And I wouldn't say that when you and I first started a meeting, you know, with me as your coach, that you necessarily were locked in place, right? Um, but you certainly were concerned about all of the, you know, you were thinking not just about yourself as well, how is this gonna impact you, but how's this gonna impact my children, right? So much like the parents that you deal with um, in the surgery realm, you know, they're making a decision that doesn't just impact them, you know, really physically certainly impacts their child more um, and, and has long lasting effects for, for their child as well. So I, you know, I think you can probably relate in some ways to that particular kind of situation. For sure. And so, um, and then, you know, unfortunately, if we don't deal with distress in a healthy, productive way, it can ultimately lead to mental and physical problems, right? They begin to manifest because either we ignore the distress, right? Um, and we pretend like it doesn't exist because we've, we've been taught that it's not okay to feel stressed or have anxiety, especially as men. You know, um, it, it, it's not necessarily okay in our society for men to feel those emotions, right? And so, but the problem with that is that um, it's always going to show up somehow, right? It's, it's going to manifest itself in unhealthy ways if it's not dealt with. So, so I want to shift because we've talked a lot about distress. Let's talk about the positive type of stress that we can experience. And so this is called eustress. I, that's a, I, you know, I, I like to just keep things simple. I like to call it just positive stress. So this is that, that situation where we feel stressful, but we feel like we can handle it. Um, we might feel challenged, but we also feel like, um, this might lead us to something better, or this decision might have a positive impact on the people that I love and care about. Um, so we begin to have more positive thoughts about our life and ourself. And, um, you know, I think this is ultimately where you landed in our coaching engagement with, I think certainly going out and starting your own um, surgery clinic did not, was not an easy decision to make. It certainly was not stress-free, but I certainly saw by the time you got to that decision, um, that you really were very excited about the decision and very confident in that decision you'd made, right? Yep. And so that's really what I think a coach can do in these situations is to help people deal with the distress because you can't ignore it, right? And then move to this positive stress of how do I get to this place of excitement, this place that I feel confident in the decision, Yes, there's still going to be some stress involved, but knowing that I can handle it, determining ways in which we can handle it, right? That's what a coach can help you do. And so, um, you know, here are the, are the characteristics of positive stress, much more short-term effects. Um, it does energize and motivate us. We, again, begin to feel excited. And interestingly enough, can actually increase our focus, right? So, so for the parents, you know, that are listening to this, it can help you shift that focus from being worried about am I making the right decision to how am I going to help my child heal once the surgery is done? How am I going to help them adapt to their new way of living and being, right? Um, and, and all of those things that come with that as well. And so um, I think there are a lot of great things that can come from, from shifting into this type of positive stress that we experience. 
So how does a coach help you do that? Well, first and foremost, you have to process those, those feelings in your general state of being. being. It, it isn't healthy to ignore it. It is going to manifest itself in other ways, right? So we have to deal with the reality of where we are, right? And um, as a coach, that's my job to meet you where you're at, right? And to walk with you on your journey. It's, it's not my journey, it's your journey, but I, you know, it's such an honor and privilege to get to walk be with people as they make these decisions and, and make these shifts, right? Um, a coach can help you concentrate your focus on the available resources that you have. Um, you know, help you get creative and thinking about resources you might not have even considered, right? And it's not my job to tell you what those resources are, it's my job to help you think through what those resources are. Um, and to really consider every possibility that exists. Um, you know, help, help you find the benefits um, for yourself. You know, how can dealing with stress in a more positive way um, and thinking about stress differently help you? How can it help your child? How can it help everyone in your life? Um, help, help you shift from those unhealthy processes. So a lot of times when we're in distress, our brains lie to us, right? And we do a lot of um, what's called catastrophizing, worst case scenario. You know, I'm, I'm going to have my child have this surgery and it's still not going to turn out well, right? Um, or it's not going to have the outcome that we hoped or wanted, or there may be more that has to happen down the road, or, you know, all like worst case scenario things with, that can pop up. And yes, sometimes those things are true, right? Um, but how do we deal with the reality of where we're at today, right? I mean, we want to want to help people shift to a more healthy, optimistic thought process. And I'm not talking Pollyanna, right? Um, the world is perfect and we're all going to hold hands and sing and skip, right? Uh, no, we're going to deal with reality and life as it is, but how can I think more positively ab about the situation? Um, and then really just help you walk um, on your journey to making a decision that ultimately you feel comfortable in making. And so I'd love it if you could share just a little bit about your own transformation in our sessions uh, that we had from moving to that distress to, to the positive stress, to really feeling in the choice you made. Yeah, I mean, I, I can actually still remember the question that you asked me that was like the biggest deciding factor. I was terrified of um, what happens if I start this business and it fails and I can't make my house payment and I can't afford to send, you know, my kids to the school that they had been going to or pay for their nanny while I worked. I, I was really terrified of what happened if failure occurred. And for me, what you asked was, what's the you know, worst thing that could happen, which helped me to verbalize what it was that I was scared of, which was not being able to provide for them. And then you helped me take it to the next step. Okay, then, then what would you do? And so then I thought, okay, well, I would have to sell my house and, and move to an apartment or something you know, less uh, that, that I could afford. I probably wouldn't be homeless. I'd be able to have some skill set. And you took me through that where I realized that even in the worst case scenario, it wouldn't be much different than the youth that I had grown up in, which, you know, was a, a very modest setting. And, and sometimes my parents struggled to pay for food, but we managed to put dinner on the table. And you helped me realize that, that I could do that for my children, even in the worst case scenario. And that was what I needed to hear. I just needed to figure out how I could make it work, even if things didn't go as planned. And, and then I knew that I was comfortable. And, you know, it was good. There were months after we started our business where, you know, you don't get a paycheck as a doctor because you're paying your nurse and your secretary and you're paying rent and all of these other things happen, but the insurance, pay, you know, uh, companies aren't paying you in a very timely fashion. And so there were real struggles that were there. And um, I, I remember at, at Christmas time, I didn't have any idea how I was going to afford mortgage the next month, not to mention any Christmas presents for my kids. And, and I had, you know, a, a moment of a, a breakdown about it. And then I finally realized that, you know, as long as I could make the business work, even if I was making way less money and had to sell the house, which was maybe going to have to happen, that 
I could, you know, I still love my kids. They still love me. I could still make it work. And I was happy doing what I was doing. And that was the important aspect for me. So um, I don't, you know, I, I think that that time where I really had to face reality and it was so difficult would have been um, much harder even for me to deal with if I hadn't already walked myself through that in advance with you. Created a plan before you needed the plan. Yes. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's the amazing thing that about coaching, right? About walking through the experience because you, you get to plan for both the, the, what if the awful thing happens and also the what if the most awesome thing happens, right? Um, and you guys literally are out there now changing the world. And, um, you know, how cool is that, right? You're, you're changing people's lives every single day. And, um, you know, you wouldn't be doing that if you hadn't made that leap of faith. Nope, that's exactly right. Awesome. Well, that kind of ends our discussion in terms of, of stress and, and understanding the, the types of stress that exist and how a coach can help you process that stress and move to the positive stress and plan for all the what ifs, right? Um, so I do just wanna share with people, this is how people can um, get in touch with me. Um, if they would like to set up, um, set up time to meet and, uh, you know, some people come and they need, you know, they want one session. Some people come and they want a series of sessions and really it's, it's, up, it's, that's kind of up to each person and we work that out together. So. And I just can't tell you enough how important it was for me in my life and, and to see the struggles that some of our families are going through and, and the real traumas that they have been through sometimes with prior surgeries that have not, you know, gone well. It just, you know, it, there's so much that's involved. You don't have to do it all by yourself. There are people just like Michael who can help you through that process and it's not a weakness it's it's not a failure to reach out for help and I wish that um, uh, you know for our families that are out there who are struggling I mean pick up the phone make a phone call send an email because if you can find somebody to help take you through this sometimes really isolating journey of your child's penis birth defect that you don't know who you can talk to about it. Well, Michael knows all about it. He knows all about, you know, what it took for us to get there, but what's involved on the personal side for the folks who experience that aspect of it. And so at least you've got somebody that you can bounce ideas off of and, and take you from that bad stress to the positive stress aspect to at least make you feel comfortable in your decision making um, when it comes to the best health decisions for your child. Absolutely. And I love what you don't have to do it alone. Right. Um, and and that's that's where I I am honored to step in and and to be with people in just wherever they are, right? Like I um, that's what's important to me is to meet you where you're at and help you get to where you want to be. We're not so good at surgeons about taking care of that emotional aspect, but I think we've really come to realize how important it is. And, and honestly, until today, I hadn't even really thought about the implications of wound healing, but of course, cortisol. And I mean, there are so many aspects of wound healing that are involved that we can't even begin to know. And, and so, you know, I, I think there's so much possibility and so much room for improvement in how we care for our families and, and that emotional well-being to me is a really big component of it. And so I wanted to make sure that y'all were aware that that this sort of, you know, service is out there. Take advantage of it if you can, because for me, it was a, a big game changer and how I, in my framework of a stressful time for me, and I think it could offer that same benefit you. So thank you so much for joining us today, Michael. I really appreciate it. And um, if you have any questions that you need from us at the Hypospadia Specialty Center, you can always reach us at info, I-N-F-O at hypospadias.com. And then you can reach Michael, as you see here, Michael Laporte at outlook.com. And, um, and he'll get you set up with anything that you may need from an emotional wellness standpoint. So thanks for joining us today. Take care. Thanks. thanks.